Well, hello, Vineyard fam. How we doing? Are we good? Awesome. Man, it's so great to be back with you all. And uh, welcome to our, our Sully Vineyard fam as well and those with us online. So great to be here with you. Man, this is, this is special. This is incredible. I am excited to be kicking off, or not kicking off, but continuing our Transformed by Truth series. And I love that as a church, you all are going through the Bible in a year. And I've been going through the Bible in a year for several years now. What I like about it is that I find myself reading things and learning truth and principles and practices from the Bible that I may not otherwise be exposed to because of my my own bias to just stay in certain parts of the Bible. So I love the Bible in a year. Love that we're doing this together. And today we get to dive into a, a topic that I just couldn't shake as I read our reading for this week. Our, our main text, it comes out of Tuesday's reading. Uh, it is Psalm 55, verse 22. And it just says this, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. What does this text mean for you? What's it mean for me today? I believe that the Father has, has given me a message that you know, it, may, it may bring up some uncomfortable thoughts. It may bring up some uncomfortable emotions, but I want to be clear that my goal isn't to be triggering, it is to make room for transformation and to make room for what I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do in us today. So let's pray, and then we're going to dive in. Well, Father, we are so thankful because this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice in it. We'll be glad in it that we get to be gathered together in your presence with one another. And we, we say, come, would you have your way? I welcome your power. I welcome your, your tangible presence to come even more. Open ears, open hearts. God, would you teach us? Would you lead us? Would you do whatever you want to do? Whatever you want to do, we are into it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So y'all, one of the habits in my life that has stood the test of time is carrying a book bag, okay? I have carried a book bag as, as long as I can remember. As long as I can remember, I've had one, but it took on a different form in college because I learned to carry all of my books and all of my notebooks at once. And I'm still traumatized to this day from running with that book bag trying to catch the bus. You know, you, some of y'all will probably remember this from high school or, or college. And you, you just know how awkward and heavy that thing is when you're trying to run with it. And this habit is continued into pastoring. And even to this day, I wear a book bag, you know, into the office, to church every single day. And this book bag is literally a running joke amongst the people who know me best. Inside of this book bag, I have my computer. I have my work journal. I have a personal journal. I have two Bibles and I have random books and some other random things that I just feel like I may need. Now, Emphasis on, on the feel like I may need. You never know. I don't want to get caught slipping without my stuff. And it's just this thing that I've been doing. I'm used to carrying it, but it has some downsides to it. Some downsides, you know, for example, my posture has been affected by my backpack. Like I, I slouch because of, of this backpack partially, right? Uh, I may look like I'm six, about maybe six foot, but I'm, I'm really like six, six when I stand up straight. But the the backpack did that. You know, the backpack's, it's, it's the backpack's fault. Another thing that I have found as I've carried this backpack for so long is, is that now I can't really walk too far with this backpack. I, I can't, you know, like if, if we're going too far, I got to actually wait. How long is the walk? Should we just drive there? Uh, because I start to feel it really, really quick now. And, and it's, it's just kind of annoying. Now, Here's the truth. I have other options at this point. At this stage of my life, I got other options. I don't have to carry this backpack around. I also could just, at a bare minimum, just take some things out of the backpack at this point. But, you know, similar to me and my backpack, my connection to this backpack, you and I are prone to carry spiritual and emotional weight on us. 
This week, as I was praying, I felt like the Holy Spirit gave me this question, and I want us to wrestle with this question together for a few moments, and it's just, am I holding on to something that I don't have to carry? Am I holding on to something that I don't have to carry? Maybe in your, your personal relationship with Jesus, what if you're carrying a burden that he never asked you to carry? Maybe drilling down even further, are, are, are you holding on to, to frustration or re- resentment towards yourself or maybe towards God because you're not where you thought you'd be at this stage of life or, or you're not where you thought you'd be at this point in your career? Are, are, are you holding on to maybe pain? Pain maybe from a betrayal of, of, a, of a friend or, or someone else, and it blindsided you, and now you just assume that this is mine to carry? Or are you holding on to maybe grief and sadness because of the loss of someone in your life? And now you just have assumed, well, this is mine to carry on my own. Well, are you holding on maybe to shame from something you did way back in your past, and you just assume that this is yours to carry from here on out? Or are you holding on to to anger uh, towards God or, or hopelessness over a diagnosis that you've had for so many years or so long? See, are you holding on to something that you don't have to carry? If if you're anything like me, what what I have found is that we're, we're prone to, in these complicated moments in life or with these complicated emotions, to run towards two strategies, either denial or distraction. And denial, denial says, well, I'm just going to pretend like this burden or this backpack that I'm carrying uh, and, and I'm holding spiritually or emotionally, I'm just going to pretend like it's not that bad. I, I, I might just actually pretend it's not there at all. Denial, it sounds like, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm okay. Or, or if, if you're like me and you've been around the church world for a while, like some, sometimes what we can do to deny what we're carrying is sometimes we'll, we'll use our Christian platitudes and our Christian habits to deny the burden that we're carrying. You know, that sounds like... Yeah, I just lost, I lost my job, I lost my house, I just got diagnosed with cancer, my best friend left me, but I'm okay. God is good all the time. Uh, yeah, God, God is good. He, he 100% is good. That is true, but underneath that, that, that phrase may be anger. Un- underneath that phrase may be fear. Maybe underneath that phrase in this moment is a, a, a doubting of that truth. Or distraction. Distraction, it sounds like, well, I'm just not going to deal with this burden, this backpack that I'm carrying right now. I'm just, I'm I'm, going to just continue to hold this. And instead, I'm going to focus on keeping myself busy with other things. Maybe some of those things are good things. Maybe some of those things aren't great things, but I'm just going to keep moving fast and I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm not going to pay attention to what's happening in me. I'm instead going to pay attention to what's happening around me in this moment because I just don't want to deal with it. See, ultimately, we, we run towards denial or distraction for the same reason. It's because what we're holding on to just feels too painful to confront. What, what we're holding on to, it feels too hard to face. So the human instinct is to just deny it or ignore it. But, but what if there is a, is a better way? There has to be. There has to be a better way. Well, Psalm 55, it actually shows us an ancient spiritual practice that is deeply connected to this idea. And I want us to go through it together. It is called lament. Lament is the process of bringing God your fears, your frustrations, or your pains. It's the the Jesus followers' response to pain, to to sadness, to grief, to anger, to injustice, to disappointment. 
We can think about lament as being the, the language of anguish. And all throughout the Bible, we see lament present. In fact, every major biblical figure from, from Abraham to Paul is seen expressing lament. 65 of the Psalms in the book of Psalms are Psalms of lament. That is literally almost half of the Psalms in our Bible. Jesus himself is even seen expressing lament on several occasions, maybe most famously in the Garden of Gethsemane when he is about to go to the cross. He, he's pouring out his, his anxiety, his fear to the Father and to his friends because he's like, I don't know if I want to do this. We even have a book called Lamentations. The point I'm making is, is that lament is not Brandon's idea. It's a biblical idea. And I want us to look at some, somebody who, who knows this well, and that is David. And in Psalm 55, David is actually in a moment of lament. He's lamenting over the betrayal of a friend. And I want us to walk through what he says. This is what verse 1 to 6 says. It says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not your face from my plea. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint and my moan because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble upon me, and in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Hey, whoa, David. <laughs> I, I want you to feel the, the emotion exuding from that text. There's, there's pain there. There's anger there. There's fear there. there there's anxiety there. And, and I want you to notice two phrases right away. Right at, at verse one, David says, give ear to my prayer, O God. And then in verse two, he says, well, I am restless in my complaint. Notice how, how he exchanges the word prayer with complaint. See, see, David understood something that is often lost today. I believe David understood that nothing can separate him from the love of God. Not even his fear, not even his frustration, not even his complaining. I, I think he knew not, not even his uh, painful emotion or his painful thoughts. David understood that the essence of prayer is communicating and communing with God. And that that communication and that communing should not stop or slow down in the seasons of life that are painful and difficult. See, it's not that God ever abandons us. He, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But in, in those complicated, hard moments in life, the, the enemy who is the ultimate author of all of the pain and the evil that we experience, he wants us to pull away from God in the moments of life that are difficult and hard. And he wants us to start to question the goodness of God. In those moments, we can wonder in our, in our hearts, well, Man, is God as, is he as good as I thought he was? Is he as good as I believed he was? And, and rather than actually taking that to God as David did, what, what, what we often do is just keep moving fast, keep moving forward, ignore those feelings, ignore those frustrations, and it only causes us to get spiritually stuck and disconnected. But lament keeps you connected when life is complicated. I want to be very clear about this. It, it, it's never that God leaves you. He is always there. He is always with you. He lives in you. You are not his Airbnb. You are his permanent home. He lives in you. He will never leave you. So why then does it not feel that way? especially in those moments? Why does it always feel that way in those difficult moments in life? Well, well what if it, it doesn't feel like we are experiencing God's presence in the same way we did in a previous season that maybe was easier? 
Not because he's changed, but because the, the weight of what we're carrying and the, the, the circumstances that we're in has changed. Maybe we're, we're carrying stress. Maybe we're carrying pain. Maybe we're carrying fear. Maybe we're carrying frustration. And that actually begins to take priority in us, whether we want it to or not. But rather than acknowledging that, rather than admitting that, we, we just continue to hold on to it. And, and what if that feeling, that feeling of being disconnected is, is not from God, but it's because we have these other things occupying space in our hearts and occupying space in our minds, but we're not giving it to him. See, Jesus, he can only transform what we trust him with. Jesus can only heal me he can only heal me in my pain if I acknowledge that is there. Jesus can only comfort me in my grief if I acknowledge that it is there. Jesus can only reassure me in my disappointment if I acknowledge that it is there. He can only empower me in my weakness if I acknowledge that it is there. He can only give me peace in the anxiety if I acknowledge that it is there. He can only transform what I trust him with. And lament is the process of, of naming what is true and then trusting God with it in those challenging seasons of life. And, and when we do that, what, what I believe the father says is he's like, okay, now I can work with that. Okay, now I can be your present help in your time of need. And this is what we see David doing. David, he, he, he is naming what is true in him. In, in fact, time and time again, we see David practicing expressing himself before the Father. This anointed warrior king who, who God calls a man after his own heart, he, he's often seen pouring out his darkest and his most diabolical thoughts to the Father, and they're in our Bibles right now. David, is, he says everything from, I wish my enemy's babies would die, to God, why have you forsaken me? To, to, to lamenting over the regret of, of killing Uriah and taking his wife Bathsheba, to, to lamenting over the, the death of his son Absalom. And think about this, that this is before Jesus and the cross. You know, Hap, last week he taught on covenants, and, and, and David lived under the old covenant, and yet this is the way that David interacted with God. Now, now as, as new covenant followers of Jesus, how much more should we feel compelled? How much more should we feel safe to be authentic and to bring our truth and our true self to God and to trust him with it. See, really, David should be jealous of the access to intimacy that you and I have. Yet, if, if most of us were, were being honest, man, that, that level of vulnerability, that, that, that level of honesty with ourselves, first of all, and then with God, that feels hard. That feels challenging. It, it may even feel unnecessary. Yet it is in that very place that the Father pours out more of himself, where he takes us deeper in him and we discover more of him. Jesus can only transform what we trust him with. But David, he doesn't stop there. He, he then makes a shift in the psalm. He, he turns from naming what is true in him to naming what is true about God. He, he is brought back to, to what he knew to be true about the character and the nature of God. This is what verse 16 to 18 says. It says, but I will call to God and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and moan and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage, for many are arrayed against me. I want you to notice that shift. That's quite the turn, right? From, from verse 1, where David's like, man, 
I don't know what God is doing. God, where you at? What's, what's happening? Actually, can, can I just fly away? I, I want to get out of here. This is horrible. To, to now, David is like, no, actually, you know what? He is my redeemer. No, no, you know what? No, he, he is fighting for me. He, he, he is good. He, he is my protector. Implied in this text is that at some point, David remembered the faithfulness of God. At some point, David was reminded about what God had done for him in his past. And that is the power and the process of lament in action. It, it starts with us voicing our hurt, voicing our, our, our disappointments, our, our anger, the sadness to God, rather than just ignoring it or avoiding it. And, and then it is in that place that the Holy Spirit meets us, and then eventually we are brought back to what is true about the Father. We're brought back to what is true about him. I don't want to be clear about this, that David's circumstances probably didn't change. Nothing changed externally for David that, that, that caused him to worship and caused him to go into declaration. And, and this, this idea and this practice of lament isn't, isn't necessarily about changing our circumstances, but it is about changing how we're holding those circumstances. This is what David says. He, he summarizes his whole journey, his whole experience in verse 22. He just says, cast your burden on the Lord. And he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. See, lament is a way of giving Jesus your burdens. It's a way of allowing him to sustain you, or that word sustain, it also means to hold you. And what I felt like the Father was saying to us today was give me what you are holding and allow me to hold you. I don't know who needs to hear that right now in this particular moment, in this particular season of life, in this particular week, in this particular day, but he's saying, give me what you are holding and allow me to hold you. Allow me to carry you. I, I, I get the sense that what he wants is that those of us who've been carrying our burdens alone, carrying burdens that we aren't intended to carry, that that ends today. That belief that, that you can't be authentic and you can't be vulnerable in your relationship with God because he's going to judge you for saying that or he's going to not use you as powerfully or you're not going to be as, as close to him. I believe that that belief system, it, it ends today. Because when you're willing to walk through the door of lament, on the other side of it is actually deeper intimacy, not less. What, what's on the other side of it, it is actually more of his presence and his goodness, not less, because he is not like us. He, he is not a man that he should lie and he said, he promised that he will never leave you or forsake you. He wants you right where you are, offering him everything that you have. See, when we're willing to express, for example, our, our anger or our sadness over the way that a particular relationship ended, the Father meets you in that. When, when you're willing to express the, the, the pain or the confusion or and the, the sadness from that loss in your life, it's in that place that the Father meets you in it. When you're willing to express your, your frustration and your, your exhaustion from the loneliness, it's in that place that he begins to meet you. you. You begin to feel his nearness. You begin to feel his love. You begin to feel his protection and his provision. And, and what I want us to do together right now is I want us to actually practice what it feels like and what it looks like to give God what we're holding and allowing him to hold us. So we're going to practice this together. And I, I want to say that, you know, if you're not ready 
to do that, feel, feel no pressure to participate. You can take notes and do this at home on your own. And that's actually my hope is that this practice would be helpful for you at home. Um, but don't feel pressure to do it just because I have the mic. But if you want to participate, I want to invite you right now to close your eyes. And I want you to get into a relaxed posture and open your hands, maybe with your palms up. And I want you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and just say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to picture a situation that has been burdening you. And I want you to specifically picture that situation like a heavy, large backpack that is on you. I want you to name the emotion and feel the emotion associated with that burden. What does it feel like? Does it feel like anger? Does it feel like fear? Go ahead and name what that feels like. Now I want you to take a moment to express those feelings that you just identified. I want you to express those to the Father right now. In your heart. God, it feels like this. This burden I'm carrying feels this way. Go ahead and express that to him. Now I want you to picture yourself taking off that heavy, large backpack. And now you're giving it to the Father. You're handing it to him. And now picture the Father holding your burden. But not only holding your burden, he's also holding you. He is embracing you. He's covering you. Now, as the Father is holding you, ask yourself this question. How has God shown his faithfulness to me in the past? I want you to think about how he's been faithful in your past. Now tell the Father what you are believing is true about him right now. Go ahead and tell him about how he's been faithful. Jesus, we give you our burdens. We give you our lament, and we are standing on your faithfulness. We're standing on and reminded of what you have done in our past. In Jesus' name. That, my friends, was a burden or a version of lament. You just did it. Lament can take on many different forms. It could, it could look like an intentional prayer moment like we just walked through together. Uh, but it also can happen through you journaling out, writing out your, your lament, your, your, your uh, fears, your frustrations in a form of a written prayer. That is something that I love to do. And what, what I actually have found is that when, the, when I engage in this process and there are some weighty emotions or or some memories that come up that don't seem to feel resolved in that moment, it's been helpful for me to talk to my Christian therapist. I've had a Christian therapist for three years. He's an awesome guy. And it's just helpful for me to like have somebody who is paid to like listen to me (laughs) 
And then to give me, give me some more tools and some different like perspective and insight into some of these things that are, I'm identifying within myself. So that is another way that I, I find support in this process. See, lament, it is giving God what you are holding and allowing him to hold you. I remember back in September of 2023, I was hospitalized because I had a medical emergency. I was in the hospital for almost a week, and it was such a scary moment. And I had been in the hospital before in the past, but this time it was it was scarier because the stakes were higher. See, now I'm a father. Now I'm a husband. Now I'm a pastor. Now I'm a leader. So, so now this, this feels weightier. And, and, and I remember as I'm in this hospital feeling a whole wide range of emotion. I, I remember honestly feeling angry at the enemy. I remember feeling angry at God. I remember feeling lonely. I felt discouraged. I, I, I felt so many different things as, as I'm sitting in this hospital. And one night, it was, it was like at 3 a.m. because if you've been in the hospital before, you know that you cannot sleep. And, and I'm awake. And as I'm there, I just begin to break down and weep. And I'm by myself weeping. And I just start to cry out literally to God. And I'm crying out. I'm like, God, I am so upset. I'm so angry. Why am I here? You, you're supposed to be my protector. I feel afraid. I'm just crying out. I'm getting all of this stuff that is in me. I'm just getting it out. And I kid you not, as I'm, as I'm talking, as I'm crying, as I'm getting all of this stuff out, I begin to literally feel the, the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit resting on me. And, and I begin to weep more. So now I'm crying more at this point, but it's a different kind of cry. And, and in that moment, I did not hear God say anything to me. It wasn't like he said this specific word, but what I felt was the, 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 the pressure and the weight that I felt on my, on my shoulders lifted. And somehow I was, I was brought back to in that moment, I was brought back to the fact, wait a second, you know what? He is with me. I'm not alone in this. Wait, wait a second. No, he, he is my healer. He, he is my strength. Oh, you know what? No, this is hard, but, but it doesn't end here. I got a lot of stuff to do. It, it, this, is, this is hard, but he is with me. This will not last. And that is what Psalm 55 teaches us. It teaches us that lament is just letting go. It is just letting go and inviting him into the things that are hard and heavy and allowing him to carry you. This is our response to Psalm 55. This is what it's inviting us into. Would you all stand with me as we pray? Father, I thank you so much because you are faithful. You are good. You are trustworthy, God, and you are our safe place. God, we welcome you right now into this space of worship where we get to declare your faithfulness, where we get to declare who you have been in our lives and who you are today. And God, I pray that you would minister to us in specific ways, that, that, that you would meet us in the ways that we need it today, God. I welcome more of your presence here in Jesus' name. Amen.